All right, welcome, 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 everybody. Um, I would take you through another song, but I might start crying before we get started. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm thankful, very, very thankful to be here today. Um, most of you have had an opportunity to meet with me at some point or another. Um, and so I'm not going to go into an introduction of who I am myself. Um, I'm going to really just get into the word. Um, but let me open up with the word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you so much for your glory. I thank you so much for your grace. I thank you so much for your mercy. I thank you, Lord, that I'm a sinner, but Father, you you washed me clean. And, and Father, I'm not perfect and never stood here to stand perfect. Uh, but Father, it is you that regenerates me. It is you that washes me. It is your Holy Spirit that sears my conscience, Father, that when I think about doing some things that I knew no better than, it's your spirit, Father, that that that's there. And I thank you for that. I thank you for discernment, Father. I thank you for the power to overcome. I thank you, Lord God, for victory in multiple areas of my life. In the powerful name of Yeshua Hamashiach, which is Jesus the Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's get to it today. Um, we are going to jump back into... Um, wasn't it Second Timothy one we did last week? So we're going to go right back into Second Timothy two, and then this way we can continue on of where we were. And so, if you remember, well, you were just here last week. Refer back to the notes. So we're going to jump into this, and I need the Holy Spirit to guide me. So this says I'm reading in the King James Version, Apocrypha edition from the Bible.com. It says. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So how can you be strong in the grace of Christ Jesus unless you connect it to Christ Jesus? Mm -hmm. Because that's where the Question. strength comes from, gentlemen. Question. We've tried our own strength. Yeah. We didn't probably try a friend or family strength. We didn't try to bottle strength. We didn't try to peel strength. We done tried the bag strip. We done tried multiple different straps, right? Yeah. But that grace, and the only way to be strong is in the grace of Christ Jesus. Now, let's stay with me. It says, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So what Paul was saying to Timothy at that particular juncture was, what you've seen and heard from me. Now, what did he hear from him? He heard the gospel. He heard the truth of the life of Jesus Christ, the grace that comes along with believing. And then so from at that very point, he says, give this to other people. That's why I'm here, gentlemen. I'm not here for any accolades. I'm not here for any pay. I'm not here for um, any shine. I'm here to give you the unadulterated word of the gospel. And then you take that word, first of all, you apply it to yourself, because that's what the Holy Spirit does. It gives you the ability to take the word of God and turn the light on yourself. Because if you can't see the inaccuracies in yourself, how are you going to fix yourself? That's what the light is for. A lot of times people think that the Holy Spirit is so that you can look around and see what's wrong with everybody else, but that's for you. Bible says, take the plank out of your own eye before you remove the speck out of your brothers. It didn't say don't help them. It said, take it out of your own eye first. And so that's what the Holy Spirit is for. And then once you've been able to overcome, conquer, what conquer what? Addiction, pornography, crime, drugs, you name it. Once you're able to conquer those things, then you can come back and restore your brother or your sister. That's what it's about. Stay with me. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, they use the term soldier. What do soldiers do? They fight. They battle. Whoever said this walk was going to be easy, you are a soldier for a reason. Now it says here, no man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life. So, when we running around chasing chicks, chasing drugs, chasing fast money that runs into being scams and plots and twists, we're chasing this life. Yeah. That's this world. Those are worldly things. Yeah. And if you live long enough to know those things come and they go. If you live long enough, you had a little money. You live long enough, you've been broke. 
period. If you live long enough, you didn't had a woman or you didn't had a man. If you live long enough, the things that we chase, you get. Now, the problem is we'll spend our life chasing things that have no value for Christ. Your Rolls Royce sitting out there, what'd that do for Christ? Huh? You drunk, slobbering, blacking out, talking about me. What is that giving glory to Christ for? Me snorting an eight ball or an ounce of Coke and being able to still have a couple of dollars in my pocket. What does that mean for Christ? It's nothing. What? Yeah. What What does it mean if I go get the latest gear and get dressed out and I'm decked out in a thousand dollar outfits every single day? What does that mean? Nothing. What does it mean if I got the fattest rims on my car and beat slamming, rolling through the hood? Nothing. What do it mean if I got the latest pair of J's? What, what do it mean? It don't really mean nothing. Like none of that means nothing. That's all material things, man. It's all materialistic things. Those are things of the world. Also chasing the stars, what Beyonce did. What that guy do with me? If Beyonce and Jay break up, they gonna give me some money? Huh? If, if, if Jay-Z hit a lick and he's a super multi-billionaire, what's that doing for me? And who, it, who if out of all these people, who's pointing you to Christ? That's the question. So you got to understand the motive and the delivery behind every single source that comes at you. Now, it says that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Who told you to be a soldier? God, the most high God. Yahuwah. Elohim, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And five says, and if a man also strives for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully, lawfully. So what this is saying right here is that if you're going for anything, calling yourself to be a master, and you don't get crowned in that, you haven't strove lawfully. What that means is you may be trying to side bend. You may be trying to get there the wrong way. You may be trying to get there on your own effort. You may be trying to get there without the grace of God. God should be directing our steps. And then it says, the husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all these things. I'm at verse eight. It says, remember that, Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead. So I need you to understand that this gospel message that I'm preaching is all about Jesus Christ being raised from the dead. That's all it's about. Now, why is that important? Because that means that whatever transpired in his life, his death, his burial, it wasn't finished until he was resurrected. And so what that means is it, does, it, it doesn't truly matter the negative things that you go through throughout your life to get to the promise. Because what is the promise? The promise is that when you hit that dirt, that you can be raised again to the heavenlies, sitting in heavenly places at the right hand of the Savior standing around and, and, and being able to be in the presence of the most high, because there's another alternative. The Bible says, choose ye this day. And that other alternative is you can take your ass to hell. Oh, I said, ass, ass is in the Bible. I do say biblical cuss words, but you choose, you choose. That's your choice. That's your choice. And so what you do in this life, predicates what happens to you in the next life. I'm almost to the point that I believe you're either met by angels or demons. Can you imagine waking up on the other side of this thing we call or know as life right now, and you're met either by something beautiful and angelic that's taking you somewhere, or you're falling into utter darkness. It is hot. Come on, man. It's only two options, right? I'll take yeah. the air condition ride up instead of the hot ride down. I want the air condition ride up. That's what I want, right? And it says right here, remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer. 
even unto bonds. So this gospel comes with some punishment. There's a tax that comes from everywhere. Why do you think they call it a soldier? Why do you think they tell you to put on your full armor? This is a battle. A battle. Battle with your mind, your emotions, your willpower, your appetites, your desires, your cravings. That's the fight, gentlemen. It's not your boss, once again. It's not your parents. It's not your friends. It's not your family. We're fighting some invisible powers. And then as, as soon as we understand that, you don't take a knife to a gunfight, as they say. You can't fight the spiritual without being spiritually equipped. You rarely equipped. You got a gun, right? <laughs> but you ain't spiritually equipped to fight in the most important arena you need to fight in. And then you stand around and, and, and we let everybody else's commonality, everybody else's plainness, everybody else's lack of desire to go get the word for themselves stunt you from growing. Who cares if your friends is doing it? Who cares if it's popular or not? It'll change your life. Ain't that what it's about? When you can't pay your rent, who who who, who you gonna call? Huh? When you can't pay your rent, who you call? Ain't nobody using the call, is it? Let's be honest in life. You might be able to make a call or two a couple of times, and we might be blessed to have somebody that is close enough that can help us sometimes. But really, when the rubber meets the road, who are you going to call? It's you. You have to be responsible first and foremost for your spirituality. If you don't plug in and connect, that's on you. Can't nobody make you do it. Then once you connect, then you can start walking in some grace and some favor. But you can't play the Lord. You can't think that he going to just act like, oh, I'm going to overshadow you. I'm going to overflow you. I'm going to do this for you or any of these promises. And you ain't playing your part. It's a part to play. Yeah. Now, it says, where and I supple trouble as an evildoer. So Paul was suffering trouble as an evildoer because he was bringing the gospel, which was contrary to what people believed at that time. Because the gospel preached Jesus Christ resurrected. They're like, what? A man got up? He's gone? That was too much. But it was foretold. So the prophecy came true. And so people didn't want that, right? And then it says, but the word of God is not bound. So even though he's in chains, right? The word of God is live. Quick. Now listen, it says, therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake. Who's the elect? There's an election process. I need y'all to hear me. They're not talking about elect in the Bible unless there's some form of election process. Think about the election. There's a vote on who's in and who's out. And certain people get elected. Stay with me, right? So God's grace elects certain people. certain people and so i need you to hear me now that's the reason why if god shows his grace and favor to you you need to be thankful because it's only certain people that get elected some people were designed for hell believe it or not it may not sound right and i know that anybody that can confess can be saved but i want you to understand that that being saved is by grace first. Grace. Grace. So that means that God had to show you grace. So if he's calling you, quit playing with them. If he ain't calling you, fine. Sorry. I'm thankful. Call me. If he ain't call you, okay. Now, it says here, therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake. I told you who the elect are that they may also attain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. There's an eternity, gentlemen. Eternity. That's a long time. <laughs> you think being in here 30 days, 45 days, or, or, or doing anything for any amount of time, we're talking about eternity forever. 
you know, we can make decisions in this life that we can recover from, right? We can get past it. But an eternal, ain't no going back, man. Ain't no going back. So the decisions are made now. And then it says, it is a faithful saying, verse 12 or end of 11, for if we be dead with him, with who? Christ. We shall also live with him. That's what's important, gentlemen. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we believe him not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. I'm at verse 14, and it says, of these things, put them in remembrance. So the things I'm telling you, gentlemen, I need you to remember it. I need you to put these in remembrance. You know why? Because we got thoughts coming of all types of things all the time. But there's a power in having the word of God in you. You know why? Because you can fight those dark things. Yeah. You ain't the only one that's getting darts thrown at you all the time. But how are you fighting those darts? How are you fighting your mentality? How are you fighting your sanity? How are you fighting your addictions? How are you fighting your lust? How are you fighting your cravings? How? Those are all things you can't see. Yeah, darkness is, is knows what you're thinking all the time. Correct. So you beat that with the word of God. Yeah. There's your power, gentlemen. The Holy Spirit, the word of God, you can truly overcome anything. The Bible says greater is he that's in you. What? The Holy Spirit. Right. Then he that's in the world. What's that? Darkness. And that's what you get when you're a believer. Remember after Jesus Christ ascended 40 days, 40 nights, they were sitting in the upper room mm -hmm. <laughs> waiting for what? The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Why? That's our comforter, our protector, our guider. And you can't get that without Jesus. <laughs> and so it, it kills me. I know that Anybody that don't have the Savior, the Messiah, Yeshua, Mashiach, they ain't got the Holy Spirit. They don't got it. Because that was a promise that he was sending back. He, he sent it back because he was gone. While he was there, they had him. Before him, they had God. Old Testament, God walked with the people, talked to the prophets. Jesus shows up in the New Testament, there for 33 and a half years. Then he leaves and sent back what? The Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. And so... The Holy Spirit, the only way to get that is from God. And so when people get to talking yes. other religions, other faiths, that's fine. I ain't knocking you and you seek it. And if you seek it, I pray that you find the right way. But my Bible says there's only one way, one. And you can't get the Holy Spirit's rapping without getting the Savior, the Messiah. And so that's where people miss it. Okay. Now, stay with me. Almost done. It says... Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearer. So what's that saying? That's saying that the things that are coming out of my mouth should profit the hearers. How does that profit you? Changes the way you think. Mm -hmm. It changes your understanding. You grasp it differently. You apply it to your life and you walk strongly as the soldier you called to be. And it says, verse 15, study to show thyself approved. You don't study to show me approved. You study to show thyself approved. To who? Unto God. A workman that needeth not being ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. It says, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. You call yourself a soldier. You call yourself uh, going for the Lord, but you can't rightly divide it. And I ain't talking about the whole Bible. I'm talking about the scriptural text that you're dealing with. Why is that important? Because I come in here and give you some flim flam. Then you go out here lost. You go out here deceived. I come in here and just uh, uh, emotionalize you and make you feel great inside and oh we had church and dance and scream and shout but you got not enriched that's for no profit and there's a place for dancing and there's a place for celebrating and all that and I'm a hoop and jumping on the side and all that stuff when I'm worshiping but in order for you to grow 
I need to give you the unadulterated word of God and let you digest that and let you apply that. And then as you study the show, thyself approved unto who? God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's people that don't divide it right. That's why they said rightly. Everybody don't divide the word right. But how do you know if you don't study? You'll listen to anything and say amen. Anything. They could have said that the Easter bunny's coming on Easter. You'd be like, amen. Ain't no Easter bunny. And bunnies don't lay eggs if nobody told you. But that was just a weird example. Sorry. Oh. Um, it says 16. But shun profane and vain babblings. What that mean? When you shun something, you turn your back on it. I ain't trying to deal with it. But it says profane. What's profane? Profanity or things that are perverse and vain babbling. Some people just talk and talk and talk and talk that the things that come out of their mouth have no benefit. And so you are encouraged, right, to stay away from that. You have to protect the crap coming into your ears. I'm, I'm serious, gentlemen. And that's one of the ways that the crap we listen to, and I'm not going to blame it all on music, part of it's the people you around. Right. I'm just saying Part of it's the people that's around you talking all this crap that does no benefit to you. You know, relationships should be mutually beneficial. And I'm not saying that you should leech off of anybody. You should not be a leech. I said mutually beneficial. If somebody's not adding to who you are and you're not adding to who they are, then really what is the point of the relationship? And I'm not talking financially. It could be spiritually. It could be uh, mentally. But there should be some mutual exchange and if there's not we got to question those relationships and we have to get away from the bam babbling bane babbling so it says for they will increase unto more what ungodliness all that crap all that really crap man it just increases more ungodliness for sure verse 17 and their word will eat as doth a canker so a canker is a worm of whom hymius and philetius whom concerning the truth have erred. So people have been erring on the truth for a long time. And what they're saying is that when you give air wrong truth, it eats like a worm eats, which is called a canker worm. Who's concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. So they're trying to say that the resurrection has already passed. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal. It's another thing, the seal, what seals you, the Holy Spirit. The Lord knoweth them that are his. The Bible says that you're sealed to the day of redemption, sealed. And so once you're sealed, there's no one sealing. It says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth, having the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Everybody ain't the Lord's. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So if you call yourself under the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Hamashiach, you should be departing from iniquity. What, did, what, that, what does that mean? That means you should be learning to go the other way. And not that you're going to be perfect, but you know, some of these things, man, you can say no to. Yeah. Come on, man. You know, and I know it's hard sometimes, but you can say no. Brother, that's the thoughts, the urges, the crap. You can say no. I know you can. It's hard, especially with somebody around. And sometimes when you're by yourself, but you can say no. All right. And it says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth. So what that means that in any rural, let's use the rural, there's people, these vessels, Compare the people to vessels. There's vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and earth. And some honor and some to dishonor. This is literally talking about some people getting saved and some people going to hell. It says, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use and prepare for every good work. That's talking about the elect. That's talking about the saved. Flee also youthful lust. That's an easy way to say grow up. 
Yeah. Seriously, youthful lust. What that mean? You did that when you was a kid. Like sooner or later, you can say you had enough. I've done that. I'm good. I lived that life. I tried that. I did it as an adult, but flee from those youth, youthful lust. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace. So those are four things. Righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is right standings with God. When you mess up, I'm wrong, God. I'm sorry. I repent. Fix me. I don't want to do it again. Repent. Run the other way. Then you're standing in righteousness with God. He doesn't expect you to be perfect. He knows you're not going to be perfect. However, you need to get back in the right standings with God when you mess up. Be real. It's part of being real. Then it also says here, faith. You can't have faith in anything but God. Now, I ain't saying you can't trust some worldly things. But your faith alone is in what God provides. He's your provider. He's the one who makes everything happen for your best. Charity. What is charity? That is love. Charity is truly loving the neighbor as you should be loving yourself. But first, you should be have a love for God. And a lot of times we got to admit that we're not very self-loving. The things we do self-destructively to ourselves, is that self-love? And then it says, peace. You can't be the rowdiest one in the batch. You can't be the one that's always looking for trouble. You can't be the one that's always looking for work. You can't be the one that's always the aggressor. And you can't be the one to be always ready to pop off soon as somebody aggress you. Sometimes you got to tone it down. Back up. Tell yourself. I don't care how angry you get. I got an anger problem. I get angry. I see red. I want to do bad things. Just being honest. So I always have to pull myself back. But you got to do that with yourself. Now, it also says, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So especially your brothers and sisters, man, and the Lord, come on. And then we wonder why don't nobody want to go to church? Don't nobody want to follow the Lord? Because look how we act. <laughs> what type of God is that you serve? What is he doing in your life? What's the fruit and evidence of helping you overcome? Why would I want to go to that church? Why would I want to listen to that? Why? And so you need to let your light shine. And then it says, but foolish, 23 verse on that, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid. So when people hit you with the okie doke foolish questions, man, I don't even entertain that. And I got better about saying not entertaining stupidity, but it's not stupidity. But you got to realize that some people just want to suck your time. Time is our most valuable asset. And some people, they just want to give you this, 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 this. They're sucking your time. You could be doing something more constructive. And that's the benefit of that, right? And so it says here, but foolish and unlearned questions of what? You know why? Knowing that they do gender strife. So what happens is you get in an argument. you going back and forth with somebody about something that don't matter. Period. Oh, I think the Lakers better. Oh, I think Chicago Bulls better. And then literally ready to fight over a team you ain't getting 50 cents from because you're in your Phillies. And so that's a worthless conversation. Oh, Trump, Biden. Who, I mean, people care. You should care. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not arguing and fighting with you over that. I'm not doing that. I'm just not doing that because you know what? It has nothing to do in the grand scheme of things with my salvation, nor your salvation. Yeah. President don't matter if you go into heaven or hell. But your faith. It don't matter. None of that matters. Don't Lakers. None of it matters. And I'm a sports yeah. fan. I like sports. I'm not knocking sports. I like sports. I go to games, all that stuff. But it's yeah, it's entertainment. But when we going to get to the real stuff, right? And then it says. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men. So I call myself a servant as angry as I want to get and tear people's head off. I'm always reminded that I need to be gentle. And my wife is my witness. When I got serious about the Lord, I got kind of aggressive, unbearable. Um, I, I, it wasn't that I was trying to be, but I just didn't have time for nothing but God. I'm sorry. That's all I wanted. And I needed him. I needed to be full with him. I seen where I lacked that. And that made me kind of prickish. You know, I was a prick, you know, short, don't, unpleasant to be around. But that's not the way to be. The word shouldn't do you like that because part of what the word does for you is makes you more gentle. It does. It makes you more understanding. 
it makes you more patient. It makes you more caring. It makes you more loving. That's what happens in the process. Now, you may get rigid at first, and that's okay, but break it down and realize that you have to be gentle. And it says, unto all men apt to teach. You know, while I'm standing here, I'm teaching. I want to teach you this word of God. And all believers should be apt to teach. Patient. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, peradventure, which means perchance, will give them repentance. It's up to God to give the repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Because he's got to call you. That they may recover themselves from where? Out of the snare of the devil. Who are taking captive by him at his will. So, folks, I've read you 2 Timothy chapter 2, continuation, um, as we recap through here without me speeding through. We soldiers, man. We in a fight. The only way we can win this fight is with the grace of the Lord. How do we get the grace of the Lord? Yeshua Mashiach, Jesus the Christ, Emmanuel, son of David. That's how we get it. And without that, man, for one, you're going to lose in this life totally, and then you're going to lose in the afterlife for eternity. Let us pray. Father, I'm thankful very much for uh, your word today. Uh, and I, as I take the the, the Holy Spirit and I, and I rub it against myself and always just turning the light on me, Lord God, continue to show me my impurities, continue to show me my flaws, Lord God. But more than that, I'm asking you to fix them. And Father, I'm asking that you continue to guide me, keep your, your Holy Spirit wrapped around me, uh, guiding me, pushing me, protecting me, Father. And I will not lean on my own understanding, Lord God, but I will seek you in all my ways. And, and Father, I do expect you to make the path straight for myself and anyone that believes that is listening today. But Father, I could never make it without you. I'll never be perfect, but I know by your stripes I'm healed and by your strength I can overcome and by your grace is all I need. I appreciate you. I thank you. In Jesus' precious, powerful name we pray. Amen. All righty, gentlemen. Um, any questions about the information that we covered today? Was it clear? Did it make sense? Right.